Today's lesson is about finding the circumference and area of a circle. So we're going to continue to use the formula sheets because they have helpful equations on them that we'll, you'll use to find the circumference and area. Uh, and we'll also talk about the parts of a circle. And we're going to talk about what the Greek symbol pi means in math, so what number it represents, and how we use that when we calculate things about circles. So let's get started. Parts of a circle first. So let's begin by talking about the entire outer edge of the circle. If you went around from part from point B here all the way around the circle and ended at point B again, you might be thinking to yourself, that's the perimeter of a circle. But perimeter is found by adding sides together, and a circle doesn't have sides. So instead of perimeter, we're going to call it the circumference of a circle. So the entire outer edge one time around is circumference. So it's a distance around the circle. Right? Point A in the middle here, that's going to be important for some of the other parts of a circle we talk about later. Uh, point A is probably a name that you might think it might be. It's the center of the circle. All right. When you connect the center of a circle to a point on the circle, so point A is in the center, point B is on the circle, uh, that line that connects those two points is called the radius. When you connect two points on a circle and go through the center of the circle, so from D to C through the center, that line in orange is called a diameter. When you connect two points on a circle that don't and that doesn't go through the center, so here the line connecting D and E does not go through the center, that line is called a chord. And finally, the line or not, I mean I guess a curved line that you use when you connect two points by going along the circle, so this light blue one is called an arc. Okay? So labeling the parts of a circle is something that you're going to have to do. Uh, if you don't know some of them, you can just keep uh, using this or the slideshow to review them. Uh, or maybe just draw a circle on your own and practice labeling the parts. All right, so now let's talk about pi. We need to understand what pi is before we start doing calculations for circles. So what is pi? Well, pi is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Non-terminating mean means it does not end. Non-repeating means it doesn't repeat. So pi goes on forever and doesn't have a pattern to it. So it doesn't repeat or have a pattern. All right? um, the symbol that we use to, uh, for pi in math is this Greek symbol here, pi. It is a Greek letter. Uh, so uh, that symbol is what you're going to see in all of your formulas when you're supposed to use the number pi. So estimated, uh, accepted estimates for pi. Uh, pi, like I said, goes on forever. So you have to estimate... Uh, if you're not a calculator, you have to estimate to get uh, as close of an answer as you can. So what we're going to use is 3.14 or 22 over 7. Either of those numbers will work as a good estimate for pi. Uh, since you're using a calculator to do most of your calculations, you'll probably type in the decimal. Uh, that's what I would recommend. All right, so how was it discovered? How did someone come up with pi? Well, it was uh, basically uh, the work of a lot of different mathematicians that just did a lot of practice calculating parts of a circle. And what all these people started to figure out was that pi uh, is a ratio that can be calculated by taking the circumference of a circle and its diameter and dividing them. So the ratio is dividing those two numbers. So um, you can calculate pi by taking any circle and measuring the distance around the circle and dividing by its diameter. And we're going to practice that later on in class. I'm going to give you a bunch of circular objects, and you're going to prove to me that pi is the number you get when you divide the circumference and the diameter. All right? Um, so this is true for any circle, like I said. So what we can do then is we can use the this uh, equation I have on the screen right here, pi equals circumference over diameter, to write other equations to use to find missing measurements for a circle. So uh, let's take a look here at the formula. We have pi equals c over d. c is circumference, d is diameter. What we learned in, equa in the equations unit is you can do this, the same thing to both sides of an equation and keep that equation equal. So I could do anything here. I could add 1 to both sides. I could divide both sides by 12, and it would still be equal. So what I want to do here is I'm going to multiply both sides by d. Okay? If I multiply both sides by d... That's the opposite of dividing by d, like uh, over here. So what we learn in equations, that's just going to make the two d's on the right-hand side of the equation go away. Okay? So again, like from equations, you just see divided by d. If you see division, do multiplication, and it makes the d go away. 
On the other side, I have to multiply by d also. And what I'm left with when I'm done here is that pi times diameter is equal to circumference. So I want to flip that around so it's the other way, like do the mirror image, and I get circumference equals pi times diameter. So here's what the, why that's important. If I measure the diameter of a circle and I multiply it by pi, I can find the circumference. Measuring the circumference of a circle can be tricky. You need a string or something to kind of wrap around the circle. Uh, so using this formula is a much more effective and efficient way and accurate to find the circumference of a circle. All right. So once I know that, I know that by looking at the parts of a circle, two radii put together, or a radius and a radius put together equals a diameter. So the formula below here, 2 times the radius times pi, or 2 pi radius, 2 pi r, is another formula you can use for circumference. All right? So those are, those are both on your formula sheet, and that's what you're going to use when you have to calculate circumference. All right? So there are your formulas. How do you know when to use which one? Um, well, for circumference, it depends what you're given. If you're given a diameter, use the formula that has a d in it. If you're given the radius, use the formula that has an r in it. Both of them will give you a correct answer. If you really want to change a radius into a diameter uh, in a problem, or vice versa, you're allowed to, but just do what's easy. If you're given a diameter, use the first formula. If you're given a uh, radius, use the second formula. Right? For area, we only have one formula, and it has a radius in it. So you have to change diameters into a radius uh, to do these formulas. And we're going to talk about how to do that. It's not too difficult, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. So these formulas are all on your formula sheet. Make sure that when you do your work, just like with the perimeter and area problems uh, for the rectangles and triangles, the first step is to write down the formulas on your paper. All right, so let's practice. Find the circumference and area of the circle. Let's start with circumference, all right? Uh, the radius is given here, so I'm going to take the circumference formula that has r in it for radius. C equals 2 pi r. Next step, substitute numbers in, just like we did for the rectangles and triangles. So I'm putting in 3.14 for pi and 7 for r for radius, because the radius is 7. And I'm just going to multiply all those together. So the circumference is 43.96 inches. The label is inches, only inches, because we're just doing distance around. We're not doing the whole area inside. For area, though, um, I'm going to write my formula down, and you'll see when I label my answer, it's going to look like the labels for the rectangles and triangles. All right, let's put our numbers in. We put 3.14 in for pi. We put 7 in for radius to substitute in. And then do your, multiple, do your uh, order of operations. So remember, exponents comes before multiplying. So I have to do 7 to the second power first. So I know when we reviewed this, I saw a lot of people doing 7, to, seven times 2 is this problem. That is not what that means. 7 to the second power means 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 49. And 3.14 times 49 is 153.86 or 153 and 86 hundredths. Uh, the label is inches squared because, again, every area, regardless of what shape you're calculating for, has an exponent of 2 because you're calculating how many little square inches you can fit inside that circle. All right? So now let's try this one. Find the circumference and area of this circle. This time, we're given a diameter, so I'm going to use the circumference formula that has a diameter in it. C equals pi times D. And I'm going to substitute my numbers in. Pi is 3.14. D, the diameter here given, is 9. Multiply those together, and the circumference is 28.26 meters. So, again, meters is just meters because it's just distance around. For area, I only have one area formula, and it doesn't have a diameter in it. It has a radius in it. So I'm going to substitute my numbers in here, all right? But what I have to think about is that a radius is one half of a diameter. If I just go to the middle of the circle, out to the edge, that's a radius. So what I have to do is cut 9 in half. So you can use your Desmos calculator if you want to, or you can just think about what half of 9 is. All right, half of 8 would be 4. Half of 10 would be 5. That makes half of 9 4.5. Right? So I put 4.5 in for the radius. So I multiply and do my exponents and do order of operations. So it's 4.5 to the second power first. That means 4.5 times 4.5, and then times 3.14. So 4.5 times 4.5 is 20.25, and then you multiply it by pi. 
and you get 63.585 square meters or 63.585 meters squared. All right, so make sure you label correctly. Your work needs to look exactly like this on paper, nice and neat, line by line by line, showing the formula, the substituting, and then the solving with a correct label. So let's do some practice now. Take a second, uh, try out the two problems, hit pause, write your workout correctly, and then when you're done, you can check your work and see how you did. All right, here you go. Here's your work for everything. So let's start out with the green one. The diameter is given here, so I just do pi times diameter first, so 3.14 times 5, and that's 15.7 feet. For the second one, uh, or for the area for the green one, it's pi r squared, so you have to cut the 5 in half to make a radius, not a diameter. So it's 3.14 times 2.5 squared because 2.5 is half of 5, or 5 cut in half. So that equals 6.25 when you square it, and then times 3.14 gets you your answer. Make sure your label is correct. For the second problem, we have a radius, so we can use 2 pi r as the formula because the formula has an r in it. Substitute and do your calculating, and you get 69.08 millimeters. And then for the area, it's pi r squared. So remember, 11 squared means 11 times 11, not 11 times 2. So 11 times 11 is 121. And then multiply it by pi to get your final answer. And then make sure you have an exponent of 2 with your label. All right, so that would be read 379.94 millimeters squared, or 379.94 square millimeters. All right, so that's it. That's the lesson for today. Uh, it's a lot like the rectangles and triangles. You're just substituting numbers in and solving making sure you're writing your workout correctly as you go along. So uh, keep practicing. Uh, get, make sure you use this to get ready for stuff, and I will see you next time.